Hello, now today Electric Pages is here in Austin, Texas for Embedded World and I have to say, I think we might be at one of the most interesting and brilliant booths that I've ever seen. So when it comes to software developments, uh, anything in Zephyr or other kind of areas and you're using sensors, trying to read the data sheet and figure out how to do the code can be an absolute pain in the backside. Well, today I have seen something that's pretty much blown my mind and I'm joined by Hi. this really awesome guy who Tell the audience who you are, what you do, and what's yeah. going on. So I am Adriano. I am the head of Embed Development in Embed.it. Um, what we do basically is uh, we bring some intelligence into the low-level driver development world. Um, we accelerate um, um, the uh, development of your um, low-level driver so you have more time to work on the application level, basically. That's what we do. Uh, we use AI to, uh, to parse the data sheet. Um, we create a digital model of that data sheet. And on top of that digital model, we generate a driver for it. Um, we can support different languages. Um, and we recently decided to embrace Zephyr, uh, which in my opinion is um, it's a very good start. Yes, yeah, a good very good starting point for um, like, uh, all the community that want to speed up, uh, especially R&D, in my opinion. Let's say, you know, you have a new sensor, you want to experiment with a board. Um, Zephyr is a good starting point because you, you have all the support for auto boards. Um, so uh, instead of spending days or different hours oh, to work on I it, think a bit more than yeah. days from, in my case. Yeah, so, if we, so one thing I want to just sort of get attention to, if you see this image here, this is what really brought me to this stand. The fact that you can take a data sheet that could be thousands of pages long, and we all know as engineers what it's like trying to decode these things, figuring out where addresses are, how to drive it, all that kind of stuff, turning it into code that you can put straight into your development environments, and you are sorted. And, and, and yeah. this is something that I have found absolutely fascinating. So do you think you could show us a quick example of what's going on and what you've got demonstrated here on the screen? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, go for it. So um, here we have like, uh, give me a second. Okay, so here we have a driver. Um, let's start maybe from the very beginning. Let's remove one or add a new one. So that'd be the PDF here, wouldn't it? That's the uh, data sheet for the. Uh, yeah, that's right. So let's, let's let's try to add a new one. Okay. Uh, let's remove this one. Delete. So we're starting from scratch in this example. Yeah. So uh, let's upload data sheet. Um, is this one? Which one is? This one, yeah. Let's take this one. So here now we are uploading the data sheet. So it's reading it, basically. Now, is it possible for us to, to see what the data sheet looks like before it finishes loading, so we can get an idea of? What yeah, it's yeah. Read? Now we will we will oh, open absolutely. it. Oh, okay, that's still so, so, so the PDF will be open like in, inside. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So oh, excellent. now we are processing it. Yep. As you can see that. So let's jump to the data sheet. Yep. Here, so the configuration system. Let's close all the, uh, the right, of this thing, of this one. So we are here. Um, here is the PDF. Okay, great. What so is this component? is our data sheet here. Yeah. So yeah, this is a, a classic um, uh, a sensor that you know we, we could support. Yeah. Um, so we have this functionality. Uh, let's enable it. So I will show you why. Um, so these are the general info that we are able to collect. So this is the representation of our digital model. Oh. That I mentioned so, so this was all generated. Yeah, it was extracted from the data sheet. It was ex yes. extracted from the data sheet. Yeah, yeah, right, okay. So, so, so we have yeah. just all we've had is the PDF. Yeah, nothing else. Nothing else. So uh, we have the device name, device vendor, um, the class. Because we, uh, if you go through Zephyr or Linux, um, all the uh, all the component peripheral are um, classified in terms of what they could do. Mm. So we are doing the same basically because yeah. it's, I think it's the best way to do so. Uh, you can see, in this case, this peripheral support both SQC and SPI. <laughs> so you can select which one you want to use, let's say SPI. So your tool has rec your tools recognize the two different yeah. types of, okay, yeah, right, correct. Yeah, yeah, go on, this is so incredible. So you have, um, so let's say SPI, it will tell you the mode supported by your, um, oh, your Look at that. peripheral, okay. So it was telling you well, which kind of mode it supports, MSB first or not, stuff like that. And then I think this is uh, one of the game changers in my opinion. You have all the registers mapped. 
with oh. addresses, sites, the name. Uh, you can change the name if you disagree. But okay. the whole point is that it's picked all of that out from the yeah. data sheet and yeah. it's filled the addresses and yeah. the data size. And it will tell you if it's read only, write only, read write. Uh, you can get the device description out of it without doing anything. The default value, if you was able to retrieve that from the documentation, the data type, and um, description. So, I want to show you something. If I click here with the backlink mode enabled, it will bring you to the exact to the point where it was taken from. And just this feature, in my opinion, is fantastic because let's say you are developing your code and you are not sure what this register is doing. You don't remember the bit fields. You don't remember some things. You know, you can simply use this tool and in one second you can find it. Otherwise, you have to open data sheet, go oh. through the index, find what you want to find. So, you will spend time on it. So I just kind of want to say very quickly that every time new develop, developments happen in the field of engineering, and they're, they're, they're kind of like, I would say, groundbreaking moments where once something happens, you never go back. Honestly, for me, I kind of feel that this could be one of those moments whereby, imagine if this, for me, if this tool was, at, let's say, in MP Lab, let's say, like, for pick microcontrollers. If I could write a register name, click that, and it showed me in the data sheet exactly where it was and that and the description, yeah. I guarantee you every engineer out there who's coding any microcontroller is constantly going back to the data sheet trying to find what page yeah. these register definitions are on. This is obscene, honestly. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, so for every register we have, we add other types. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? So let's say you have a register that is composed by several bit fields. Um, it will create for you the C code required to deal with that. So it's structure with all the bit fields, we will populate that for you. So you, I, will, I will show you. Um, so we have events, uh, like the events that you was able to retrieve from the data sheet. I mean, RQ, uh, let's say time air respiration, stuff like that. You can retrieve that for you. Um, Something like interrupt events here. Yeah, we will just um, try to generate like um, an enumeration for that, so you can use them in the code. And mm. we'll tell you all the events he was able to retrieve from the data sheet. Mm. So, uh, you know, there is no risk that you will of leave course. anything behind, basically. Yeah. And the last thing is this setup feature. So what it does, um, let's say your component uh, support different modalities, different ways to work. You can create um, different sequences to support all those modes. You can reshuffle the order. You can... Um, edit them, um, you know, you can change the value here, oh, for the value here, and oh, you can, it, oh, wow. it allow you to oh, change only the possible values, not just every possible combination. Oh, the combinations that we, uh, we let you to enable are only the combinations supported by the data sheet. And, and, and everything we're seeing here came from one PDF. Excuse me? Everything we're seeing here came from one PDF. Yeah. And so you can also add delays. Let's say you want to write a sequence of registers and the, doc, the data sheet is telling you I need uh, you know, 10 milliseconds between one write and the other one. You can just add it there and the code will do that for you. Um, so once we are here, let's see if there are error. No, no error during the generation. So we should get to go. Okay, so let's try to generate the code. Oh, sorry. No, that's a, um, honestly, I just can't get over the software. Project I, option, you know, we select the, the language we want to use. Let's say we want to go C, bare metal, uh, static memory location. The RMCU is Little Indian, and we want to use blocking. We go here, we press the button generate, and we wait. So, I think earlier on you were telling me that this is a plugin for Visual Studio Code. Yeah, correct. Code. Yeah. So, it's a plugin for Visual Studio Code. You can use it for free. For limit, we limited capacities, limited functionalities, we say. Um, so you just, you can simply go to the Visual Code Market, download it, and use for free for SPI and as for C peripherals. Now, my question to you, while this uh, code loads, do you guys have any intention of trying to get this into other IDEs? Um, other IDEs, not at the moment. So we would like to use our Visual Code. Um, hmm. System, so we want to have our own uh, so, ID, but we because can I'll give on that. one example I can think of, like is I use MP Lab a lot, uh -huh. and and I use that because that's how you use pick microcontrollers. But I would love to have that on the side. Okay. So, 
And unfortunately, you can't do that if it's Visual Studio Code. So is that something, do you, would you be, do you think you guys might be interested in trying well, to yeah, approach? Yeah, we can think about that, of course. Because I, mean, I tell you yeah. now, it would be a gold mine to have that in, certain, in some of these packages. Yeah, sure. I mean, if we have, like, uh, if we have people interested in that, why not doing that? Yes. You heard it here first. And microchip, you've got to, you've got to get onto this, because this is exactly what all integrated development environments need, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so what else can you show us about the uh, code? So can you show us the, the driver code has been generated? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah of course. So let's go ahead. And again, just for, just for uh, reference, this has all been generated right now, yeah. live at the event. Yeah, correct. So I would say one is very uh, important file is uh, the register mapping. So you have all this code that is generated. All the content here is taken from the data sheet. Yeah. So it's not just static comments is uh, populated using information that were retrieved from the data sheet and uh, they are doxygen compatible so from this code you can generate all the documentation I see in one second basically so um, do you remember the register mapping yes here we have the same registers with yep, the, the who with am the, I yep. yeah that's there the zero zero X I remember that yeah so over here yep. so you know you don't have to write all this stuff. It's already written for you. That's and the whole documented point. because it's a very typical. You start working the first day, you are very precise. You write everything. Second day, the same. After one week, you start leaving behind register because say, oh, no, I'm going to use it. So, exactly. But this thing has got every single register down. Yeah. And uh, another, I think, very important file is this one, data types. So if we go, give me one second. Yeah. Take, for example, this data type. Yeah. This is a register, it's a bit field. Yeah. And so, so we've got those individual bit fields there now. We create all the, all the bit fields for yeah. that, including the documentation. So when I, start co when, I start write, when I write that structural code in Visual Studio Code, that's going to pop up as the parameters yes. or the... Oh, yeah, the auto completion, we work out of the box with all the information that for you. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah, that's the idea. So do you think you could show us typing that structure out, or do you think you could show us typing a structure out? showing the uh, the drop down as you're using it uh not here at the moment we need to create a project like oh okay yeah, yeah. so this so these are all just the, the include files the c files h files yeah so yeah yeah once we are here with the bare metal you create your project you just mm. download include the file those. include the file fantastic uh, that's why we decided to uh, move a step forward uh, towards sorry zephyr yes of course because then you know with the bare metal it's fantastic you can use the code mm. The way you want, um, you know, it's, there's no limitation there. Of course. But what if you want to create something more out to the, you know, really to be used? Yeah. Okay. That's why we decided to go after Zephyr and support Zephyr, because then you know you can. It's a, it's a well-established RTOS system. Yeah, and you know and they have plenty of boards already supported. Absolutely. Uh, you have APIs there, so why not using that? Which because also means that this thing instantly becomes compatible with any Zephyr project and that yeah. means that it's very easy. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's, the, you know, that's the goal. Of course. We now support sensors, hmm. which is a big part of uh, Zephyr. Oh, absolutely. So we generate for you a project, a sensor project for that component. And using this platform, that now means if I want to include 10 sensors, it's gone from 10 weeks of trying to make sure it's working to 10 hours of plug and place, plug and place, plug and place, yeah. in it goes. Yeah. So just before we wrap this video up, I've yep. got one more question for you. Sure. For the viewers who are watching this video mm -hmm. and, and want to get involved with embed, uh, embed.it with 2Ds, what would you recommend that they do? Um, what I recommend they do? Mm -hmm. Well, go straight to our website, download the vStudio Code plugin for free, and try to use it with any SQC or SPI peripheral they want, they, they want to experiment with. Fantastic. My thank you ever so much oh, for taking the time. Thank you for stepping by to No our, worries, it's been fantastic. Thank you so much. It was fantastic, it you was know, great. connect to you. Thanks.